Here are seven very simple steps that you can put in place to get a Rolex from your authorized dealer. And I am buying watches at the moment, so if you have something to sell, please do get in touch. And if you're looking to buy something also. So I have bought Rolexes from the AD, and I've spoken to probably thousands of people now that have also done the same. So I have a very good idea of what it takes to get off with a Rolex. Step number one, go into the store. Do not email, do not call them. Physically go into the store and listen, do not ask for a watch. This is where most people trip up. So they are assessing you from the moment that you walk in the door, okay? Very judgmental, but they have to be, okay? So make sure you smile. Yeah, make sure you open a conversation, be nice, be warm, be charming. They basically are making sure that you're the kind of person they want to sell a Rolex to. And unfortunately, this is the case, but I say this all the time, it's a popularity contest. The more they like you, the more willing they will be to sell you a Rolex. I actually could end the video with just that one step, but I've got six more that will go into a bit more detail. So step number two. There will naturally be a point where they say, you know, how can I help you today? Is there anything you're looking for in particular? This is again where you say nothing about a particular watch. This is where you open up more about yourself. This is where you describe what you like, what hobbies you have, what plans you have in the future. You're basically telling them more about yourself so that they can make an informed assumption about the kind of person that you are to then help make them an informed decision about the watch that they can offer you. So it's all about helping them help you. So you have to give them information. For example, I love to travel, you know, me and the family are going away in two weeks time. I've just got a promotion. So I thought I'd celebrate. Um, I train a lot. I've got the London Marathon this year, which I'm really excited about, but you know, obviously wear my Apple watch for that. I'd like something that's like a bit informal, not too blingy, something that I can wear that's like pretty sporty, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You've given them some information and you know, that was very like robotic. Okay. But the point is, give them information to work with. What I've basically said to the AD here is that I like to travel, so a flying watch might be cool, or you know, I like to go on vacation, so a, a watch to wear in the water, the pool of the sea would be pretty cool. And that I'm also pretty sporty, so something that's you know sporty and durable would be a cool watch, and nothing too blingy kind of rules out anything gold, I would guess. Basically, I said that I'm open to any steel sports Rolex, which is what we all want, pretty much. And like I said, without directly asking for these watches, you, you know, you've equipped them with the information to know that that is what you're looking for. And for for some reason, you know, human psychology, we just prefer this. And it's been proven time and time again that it works. Because I know a guy in motorsport that got given a Rolex Daytona. I know a scuba diving instructor that got given a Submariner. And I know a lot of travelers that get given Yacht Masters, GMTs, and Skydwellers. So it is super important to share this information because if they decide which watch that they should offer you, they're gonna feel way more attached to you as a customer and way more willing to fight to get the watch allocated to you. So after talking more and more, let's just say that they suggest uh, an Explorer 2 and a Submariner No Day. Now, step number three, this is where it gets a bit interesting, okay? Because they will tell you straight up, they do not have the watches that you've asked for. Now that is either a complete lie, which a lot of the time it is, because they will have the watches in the back, they just don't want to tell you, or they might not. Sometimes ADs don't know when they're going to get allocated and sent watches by Rolex, so they might be telling the truth. Either way, what they're going to now say is, we'll take your information, we'll put your name down on a, a list of sorts, a waiting list, and if anything comes in, we'll let you know. And they'll position this to you as though you're at the bottom of the list, blah, 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 whatever. What they say versus what they mean is very different. What they mean here is that the chances of you actually getting these watches is next to next to no chance okay it's so so slim that you're going to get offered these watches but they have to pretend that there's some sort of fair and structured allocation process i.e a list where they'll sell watches over and over again each month until they get to you but that isn't the case step number three is actually a very awkward and uncomfortable step to go through because you can see through the lies and you can see that there's some sort of, you can see that there's more to this and that there's something going on. But anyway, step number four will help you maybe expedite the process of waiting for the watch to be allocated to you. So you don't just leave the AD and in six months or a year or two years, just wait for a phone call, right? What you actually need to do is check up on the status, but without being creepy or pushy, don't ask if my watch is here yet, just don't mention it. But instead, Bring the family in, you know, introduce some of your family members, tell them how the holiday was, tell them how the London Marathon was or whatever. Um, it's about building the relationship now. And it pains me to say, but 
it helps to spend money on other stuff. And what I mean by other stuff is other watch brands and jewelry. There, I said it. Why does it help to buy non-Rolex? Well, look, AD sales staff are not targeted on how many Rolexes they can sell because it's, it's too easy for them to sell Rolex. They're not targeted on that. What they are targeted on is other watch brands and jewelry. So if you can help them hit their quarterly target for their jewelry or whatever it may be, they will naturally feel like they want to help you a little bit more. So yes, building a spend history is important. It does help. It's, it, you don't have to do it, but it does help if you're in a position where you can do it and you're gonna buy a ring or jewelry anyway for your wife or girlfriend or whoever, buy it in the AD, don't go somewhere else, build your spend history there. I've sp spoken to a lot of people that do this and they get offered very nice watches and look, what they say to me is, you know, yeah, I did spend a few K on this, but I got offered a Daytona and you know, technically it's worth 10, 15 K more than what, you know, what I bought it for. So it kind of makes sense. Some of you will be thinking, do I have to spend money to expedite and shorten the process to be an allocated the watch I asked for. No, I know some very lucky people that I haven't spent a penny on anything other than the Rolex that they asked for. Now, why? Well, they've built an amazing rapport. They've almost become friends with the AD, and turns out if you, if you become friends with someone, they wanna help you and you don't have to buy anything else. But does it help to spend money? Yes, absolutely it does. Now, a little bit earlier on, I mentioned in my little example that I was training for the London Marathon and I was excited for it, right? Informing the sales staff of huge milestones in your life will, one, make you seem like a way more interesting person that does stuff, and two, it gives them a deadline. It gives them a set amount of time for them to allocate you that watch, and obviously a very, very good reason why they would give it to you. It's almost like AD sales staff need convincing why they would sell you the watch. So if they know that they've got six months before this guy runs the London Marathon, they're maybe consciously or subconsciously going to want to try and work towards that deadline. Now, a lot of people will go for a big birthday year or an anniversary or the birth of a child or whatever, but guys, we, you can do better than that. Trust me, you can do better. I knew a guy that climbed Mount Everest last year and his pitch, his story to the AD was that him and his mate, wanted to both wear an Explorer 1 with their initials and the date they summited Mount Everest on the case back of the watch. Now, if that isn't the best pitch for a Rolex watch, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what is. If you guys know some amazing stories, I'd love it actually, I would really genuinely like to know what they are, but for me, climbing Mount Everest with your best mate and having it engraved when you summit is absolutely, unbelievable right not just the achievement but like just the story behind it wearing that watch what it was you what it was designed for is fantastic now i understand that not everybody can or will or will want to climb mount everest but there will be something for you point i'm trying to make here is that when you cast out the hook there needs to be some bait on it so that when you reel it in you actually reel in a good watch well it might be that you are taking your scuba diving exams at the end of the year it might be that you've been a pilot for 10 years you might be selling your business or releasing a book that you know these are all like pretty big achievements i get that but there will be something for everybody following on from this where you're not being like creepy or pushy about you know wanting your watch don't make it about yourself i know, I know i've talked about like you know pitching yourself all the time and like giving them a reason why they should sell you a watch but but actually what i found is a lot of the time the people that do the best with the ad are the people that can build the rapport and the best two-way relationship so you know once you're done telling them all about yourself and all the things you want to do and the things you've done ask them about what their interests are ask them why they like watches ask them what their grail watch is you know, create this dynamic where it's just an open conversation, you know, find a common ground and explore it with them. It's the best way. It's, it's like, you know, if you're trying to make new friends, like this is exactly what you, you would do. So don't treat it any differently. Don't put the AD sales staff on a pedestal. Just treat them like normal people, you know, try to become friends with them in a, uh, in a genuine way. Because I found that the people that can do this best get offered the watches that they want. So I know it's hard because we are, you know, the, the main character in our own stories and we love talking about ourselves, but don't make it about you. 
make it about them as well. And if you struggle to make friends and win people over, uh, there is a good book called How to Make Friends and Influence People. So give that a read. Step seven. Okay, so in six months or 12 months or however long, you will get a call or maybe an email and it will be like, oh, great news or congratulations. Um, we'd love for you to come in because we have something for you or something like that. It could either go very, very well and you get offered the watch that you want or I'd say a higher percentage of the time they invite you in because there's a different watch that you didn't ask for, but they're gonna offer it to you anyway. Um, and this is, like, I think personally that this is a bit of a test, right? Because you can do either one of two things. Well, there's probably more things, but you can do, I'll give you these two options, right? So at the start, we put our name down for a sub-no date and an Explorer 2, okay? Now, you've just been offered a two-tone date just 41, okay? Now, like I said, you can do either one of two things. You can buy the watch. And that's great, you know, you're showing that you have the money, the disposable income to buy the watch, and it shows that you've got an interest in watches, and you know, you're showing that you're happy and genuine about buying watches. But that could also look very, very impulsive when you didn't ask for it, and it goes against everything you've just previously said. I don't think that looks very good, especially if they know you quite well at this point, and you know, they know that you don't like gold, but Maybe they tested you just to see what you do. Maybe they think that you're actually just gonna sell this the minute you walk out the store. Or what you could do is decline the watch, turn it down. Now, that might look great. They might be like, yeah, this guy's the real deal. He knows what he wants. He's very, very sure of himself. He, he definitely wants these watches and he's definitely not going to sell them in the future. Or they might look bad. They might be like, okay, maybe this guy doesn't have enough money to buy the watch, or maybe he's not the kind of client that we want, or, oh my God, I can't believe he's turned it down. This is actually a great, great watch. I love this personally. Why would he turn this down? It's, it's something that you have to get right, and there's a balance to the way that you approach the response. Now, we are gonna turn this down in this situation because it's not what we want. We don't, we don't want that. We want a steel sports Rolex, right? We want a sub or whatever. So in your response, what I advise you do is just say something like the following. Look, this watch is actually lovely. Seeing it in person is actually a lot nicer than, you know, on pictures and online or whatever. However, it, it just isn't me. And I don't think that I would wear this watch enough. It wouldn't get wrist time. It'd probably stay in the safe. And that's really unfortunate when someone else could have this lovely watch. I'd rather this go to a home where it is loved and taken care of and enjoyed and used for the purpose of, of what it was designed for. However, you know, if something else does come along, you know, I would gladly take it. Something a little less blingy, um, blah, blah, blah. How to leave this situation? Just say, you know, hope business is great for you guys. I'll see you soon. I'll come say hello when I'm next in town, whatever. Um, yeah, just leave it on a good note. If all these seven steps go to plan, the next step will just be, you know, obviously you getting uh, the watch that you asked for, you'll get the call, you'll go in, you'll pick it up and just make sure that you're very grateful, show the gratitude. In conclusion, remember, it's all about being nice. You know, people will want to sell you a watch if they like you, if you're friendly and if you're genuine. So best of luck. Also guys, I do sell watches. So if you don't want to do any of these seven steps and you want to skip the queue, I do have quite a lot of watches. So get in touch if you're interested, but I thought I'd help you guys. Uh, from my experience. Remember to like the video if you if you enjoyed, if you took anything from this and subscribe for more videos in the future. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.